dear Facebook. <laughs> oh my gosh. Pedophilia right on Facebook. You know what? I'm trying to think how long I've actually been a member on Facebook. I think I've been, I think I, yeah, I've been on Facebook since like 2008. Was that 2008? 2008, 2009, somewhere around that time. But Facebook has a, they have a mass of pedophilia, something going on. Yeah, that's all I can say about that. And don't take this as judgment. Me, I don't really know and understand what pedophilia fully is. I'm saying in the area of what, what, what will make a grown man, you know, want to, well, I should say women as well, because I don't want to make it look like I'm just, you know, bashing one side. But what will make a grown man want to insert his, you know what, into a child? Like, not really saying that it, that is sickening, but call it whatever you want to call it. But yeah, since I've been on Facebook, I can say... Um, the only encounter I can say with those type of people as, as in the things that you view from far away and you kind of like stand in shock cause you don't know like what is really going on. And is if you're really seeing what you think you're really seeing and you don't know what to say, but to go ahead and report it or even report it to the authorities. Yes. That type of stuff. I can't. I can't let that type of stuff just bypass my eyes and not say something, you know? So I think the very first time I seen something like that was anybody remember when everyone was changing their profile photos, they were really colorful cartoon. I think it was like Disney and a lot of other stuff that everyone was changing their photos and supposedly, or their profile photo. It was supposedly supposed to be in support of something in relation to childhood something. I can't even remember because it was that long ago. And I think during that time, that was like 2011, 2012, 2013, 20 something around back then. So for me, I didn't want to change my profile photo because see, to follow what everybody is doing is to, is to not stand as yourself. And yet, not only that, I felt something about that was not right. I felt something was wrong in the area of where it was millions of people all across the United States that was changing their, their photo to those cartoon characters, right? Something in me just sensed that something about it wasn't right. And hundreds of people on my friends list was changing it. So that's how I found out. I found out because you know how you see in the media of, of spreading awareness about this cause or that cause. I saw it from I saw it from that. But I also saw it because friends on my friends list was changing theirs. And I just sensed like something about this is not right. And I remember speaking out saying, you know what? You guys shouldn't follow what everybody else is following because there might be something deep under this that we don't know about. It does not seem right. So I'm not changing anything of mine and come to find out that was in fact a pedophile ring going on that they were using these, these photos to try to figure out what children they could snatch up and molest or rape or whatever. It was just a whole lot of deeper stuff going into and I felt that was not right, but come to find out it was not right. It was, in fact, a child molestation pedophile ring being ran on Facebook. And a lot of people didn't know. And then when it came out in the media that that's what it was, everybody hurried up and changed their profile photos back to whatever they had before they changed it to those cartoon characters. So speaking on the area of coming across this stuff and not knowing fully what it is, see, because to never be raised around a pedophile is really not to really understand what it is, their demeanor and how they snatch children and all that other stuff. It's terrifying if you ask me. So that was one experience. The next experience is when I seen a photo of a grown man. That man had to be 
Ooh, I think he had to be like 55 years old, somewhere in his 50s. And that he was having sex, full-blown sex in this photo with this little girl. And she was about like five or six years old. I'd never seen nothing like that. All I could do was push report. And I was going to call the police because I didn't know like what to think and feel. I'd never seen anything of that of that caliber in my face. See, that type of stuff, how I came across it, I was on, you know how you're on your news feed on Facebook? That popped up. People literally be sharing stuff like that. And that's how stuff like that get millions of views because instead of people saying, you know what, I'm going to report this, I'm going to contact somebody at Facebook. Yes, you can contact Facebook headquarters. Yes, you can. Don't tell me you can't. Instead of them contacting Facebook headquarters, uh, they just share that type of stuff. It's just so weird. Like, I don't know, like, what America is becoming today because there are, in fact, people that be raping girls and even young girls and stuff like that in broad daylight in front of the public. And yet nobody speaks up and says nothing. Nobody speaks up and call the police like that one girl that got raped by them five, six guys. I think she was a teenager and people sat and watched that. And nobody thought to go call somebody. It was groups and crowds of people gathering and lining themselves up to watch that. And yet, that's trauma coming out of that. Like, how could you stand watching something like that and not speak up and say the fact that, you know what, this right here is not cool. I need to go call somebody so that they can take care of this. Because in the end, whoever is being traumatized, they will come out with heavy behavioral issues. See what I'm saying? Not only that, they end up growing up being the ones that's burning down, you know, doing arson and burning up people's houses and blowing up stuff because they can't handle their emotions later after an incident like that has happened to them. So, yeah, seeing that grown man having sex with that little girl, I didn't know what to think or feel. I mean, I was like in shock. You know how you see something and you're like, this can't be real. And so you, while you're looking at it, you can't move because you're like, this is not real. I had never seen nothing like that. Child pornography, stuff like that. I have never seen anything like that face to face. It was just, it was a bit much for me on that part. And I'm going to leave it at that. Okay, so that was the second incident. This all is on Facebook. The third incident, I mean, you just, you see, I could name incident after incident. You just see all type of everything on Facebook and like I said before with this sharing and sharing and sharing instead of reporting is that makes it bigger because see when you're sharing stuff like that there's other there's other pedophiles somewhere that is sitting state to state that is watching that type of stuff and some of them end up finding their way back to the source of who was sharing whatever in the groups or on the news feeds or whatever and then they just fall in line and and get involved in that type of stuff like me I just it's too much and the reason why I'm bringing this up is yesterday late late last night now I'm a member of one of the LGBT groups on Facebook right I'm a member of many of them and so there have been teenagers that have reached out to me fine whatever you want to conversate what is your struggle see for me to be on there is to help you through your struggle You leave sex out of that. Because a lot of these kids, their parents didn't disown them and everything else. If you want to talk about you feeling suicidal, you can talk to me. Whatever. We can help resolve and dissolve that issue face to face. But in the area of some grown man, he contacted. First of all, he posted something about that didn't even seem right. And I'm not trying to judge or bash him, but it's just something leery about it all. So I'm in this group. Now the group is made for all ages. It's not for te- it's not just for teenagers and I don't think I think they should have their own group. And not only that, it should be moderated by somebody working in law enforcement or something like that. But going back to what I was saying. So this group is for all ages, but more so for adults. But somehow teenagers make their way on there. And so this man Every so often he posts 
asking different people. He's not asking different people, but he's just posting in in the on the wall or the main wall of the group, asking people what their sexuality is, and then he'll ask you what's your MBTI personality. So basically, he's like, well, what's your what's your sexual preference, and what's your personality type? And so people are responding back to him because it's a general question to the general public. And so I also responded. And so he wanted to add me in his group based off, off of his question of your sexuality along with your personality type, which mine being the INTJ. And so he's, he told me the reason why he set up that group based upon personality type and sexuality is because he was trying to get away from that actual group because he started to see pedophiles in there. See what I'm saying? He didn't really like report it or contact somebody at Facebook headquarters, let him know, you know, we have an issue in this group. And so I told him about that on the chat. Anytime you see stuff like that, you report that. Even if you got to call the headquarters, because yes, you can call. And so they'll crack down and shut that whole group down because that's what they do. So, um, he's talking to me on chat. He asked me to help advertise his group and see with me not knowing him personally, I can't really do that. I can't advertise your group on my Facebook because you might be in fact being the pedophile yourself, just seeking out different young girls trying to see the mind frame of who I am and where I come from. Because for me, that just was, that was just completely strange for somebody to come to me and say, let's chat. I got a group. I want you to advertise it. It's for adults only. Like, why do you have to ask people's personality type? And not only that, I have not seen him. I haven't just seen him post that one time, but I've seen him post it over and over of, asking people's sexual preference and their personality type like i seen it today it just something about that is just strange because see with me looking deeper into stuff as i do i would take it upon myself to think okay is this a grown man behind this screen trying to to scan out the sea who is a young mind? See, be, see, because a teenager, a lot of times, they don't understand personality tests. Many of them don't. See, because some of these kids are making their way into their to these groups and they're 14, 15 years old, sometimes 13, 12 years old, right? So I'm looking at this man, and I could be wrong, but I'm like, to, to ask people what is their personality on that type of group, knowing there's kids on there, is almost to use it to screen out to see who is on here young and vulnerable as well as to see who's the actual adults like yeah i i view stuff like that in a whole whole different realm because you to see stuff at all angles and sometimes to see stuff of what it is and so me not knowing him he didn't request to add me as a friend he just wanted to chat or whatnot but i just not knowing his intent, I was like, you know what? There's more than what meets the eye. And he laughed. He laughed when I said that because I just was like, who does that? Now me, I'm the type of person, I do ask people their personality type, but it's not usually in relation to a group asking it constantly in a group. Because once again, as I said before, Anytime you take, listen to me when I say this, because people don't see when you explain stuff, people be like, man, you be thinking all type of levels. Yes, I do. Why would you be in a group that sometimes includes teenagers and you're asking people their sexuality as well as their personality type? You're asking it as one whole question. To me, once again, that seemed like you're screening to see who is kids on here so you can gather those kids. That's what it just feels like to me. Maybe I'm wrong. I need to repeat this. I keep repeating because in my mind, some of this stuff that people do, it don't make sense. Because I said before, see, when stuff like this is presented to me, I have to question because 
in all of it, my soul and my spirit don't feel right. I feel a lot of element when stuff like this get to happening because see, like I said before, you can be standing in front of a pedophile and he's on the other side of the screen yet you don't know it, but you like something that's not right. So to try to screen to see who's a young child is to ask these type of questions because once again, a 14 and a 15 year old would more, more than likely not normally know their personality type. Remember, a 14 and 15 year old is not sitting anywhere trying to get to know what their personality type is. They just don't do that. Usually, an 18 or 19 year old will get on an MBTI personality test and question up and down what their personality is. Understand. Understand that. I know the perspectives of a child because, see, in my, let me see, when I went to college, like, years, years back, I studied early childhood education, which means I had to document how young children and even teenagers, because I work with them, too, I had to, to document their behaviors and how they think and their thoughts and their feelings, their actions, all that. Even in the area of sexuality, I had to ha I had to have an understanding. And so me and this guy, him on the other side of the screen was telling me he was kind of leery. He kept saying the word creeps. He kept saying, you know, there's creeps on here. There's creeps on here. And I'm like, okay, I'll, all will be cool. Just report what you see, whatever. And so what did he say? It was something that he said. It, I can't even remember. See, my mind is too much information. I, I was just too busy trying to figure out, like, what is going on here? Facebook just seems to be coming up a ring of just nothing but pedophilia. Yes, it does. It just seems like there's just, you know, it just, and it's so, it's so sad that something like that, that could be a blessing to the world can become so tainted because see on one end of the global sphere you got people that are using that for professional business reasons right they're using that for marketing and advertising for a positive reason and then you got people that close-knit families and friends that are using it so that they can stay connected and even college students they can stay connected and then you gotta look the niche groups which is like you know, if you like to fish or you like to do photography, if you like to do certain things that is your hobby or, you know, things you enjoy or even stuff in relation to the gay lifestyle, joining a group like that in areas where you've been rejected by mainstream society. Stuff like that pedophilia stuff just messes up, up stuff. And that that's the type of stuff when it happens is one of the main reasons why many of these major corporations start changing their policies. YouTube being one. Because if you, if first of all, a Facebook or even a YouTube corporation can only crack down so much, there's only so many humans to go through millions and billions of, of uh, stuff being uploaded or even posted. So that's why that's what the pur purpose of having robots to cipher out that bad information and remove it. And yet sometimes even in that, a lot of things bypass the filter. So these pedophiles is completely they're messing up the Facebook experience. And they have been since they've been given getting on there these past few years. Yes, they have. Since the 2000s have rolled into the double digits, the pedophiles have been completely messing up these social media platforms because to me, it's just it's too much danger in that. Like I said, I'm not trying to bash. If that's what you are, I feel pedophilia is, in fact, a sickness that needs to be seen by a doctor, counselor, therapist or whatever to heal what has happened in your past. But that all that needs to be re that's an issue in itself that needs to be resolved. But yeah, I just I don't like stuff like that because sometimes in pedophilia it actually carries murder. <laughs> you got what I'm saying? 
And so for me to be the type of personality that I am, I have trust issues, period, with certain type of people. So when you want to get on these chat zones or chat areas and get to conversating with me, I'm always standing in question from a complete distance. Who are you? What do you want? And what is your sole purpose in life? And what do you want to do with me? What is the conversation? And that's what I hate. I hate that because you can't really you can't really form proper connections when you got that type of stuff going on. See, as I said before, I joined the group so that I can have a conversation with young suicidal teenagers that and even early 20 year old kids that are having issues maybe with their home life. To be gay a lot of times is to be thrown on the streets and completely rejected by family, even beaten by family. As this one young kid was telling me, his boyfriend died and his family was beaten on him and all this other stuff. So, of course, he's walking around begging, trying to get clothes and food and all that. Situations like that is real. But that type of thing is just, it's so, it's so scary. It's very scary because, see, for a pedophile to sit on the other type, other side of the screen trying to scope out who he can snatch up, many of them pedophiles a lot of times is why you have kids that come up missing and have been missing. Like the type of kids you see on the side of the milk cartons that you saw back in the 80s when you bought the milk carton or whatnot. You see those kids that came up missing because, see, to be a pedophile and snatch up somebody from online or even in person is to rape and molest that child. And not only that, they know that child has seen their face. So when they when they send that child back home or release that child, that child could easily go to the authorities. And not only that, that leads to him going to jail, possibly for life, depending on the type of crime that he did with that young child. I think many of these pedophiles be snatching up these kids, raping and molesting them, and sending them overseas somewhere to some sex sl sex slave ring or something. Something just does not be right, and it don't be adding up. Because I know for a fact, for a young a young mind suck, soaks up everything. That young mind remembers everything. And one thing that they don't forget is a face. So if you are to take a child off the internet and molest that child or rape that child and treat them like they're some sex slave, the child will never forget your face. And once they go back home, yes, mommy and daddy or whoever will be right at law enforcement office sketching you out so that they can find you. That's how... Uh, Children also end up dead. Murder. Yes, murder. Listen to me when I say it. See, a lot of people in American society, they live completely naive to these type of things. Little Johnny or little Troy or whoever is online, and yet they're online for hours. And yet you don't even know who they're talking to. But you trust in your soul and their spirit that they're doing just fine. And yet on the other side of that computer screen is a grown man waiting to get your own child in his bed. Happens every day, I'm sure. But every time that I see a face of a child that has gone missing, I'm saying that those, you know how you are on the side of, the, of a highway or freeway and you stop at a rest stop? And you see all these different missing persons and they're all children. They're lined up on the board, set by set, side by side. And some of these kids have been missing since like 1990, 1994. You're like, okay, well, where are they? What happened to them? How does a child just come up missing? I should make a video about that because even stuff like that, is scary in itself. I remember that show called um, way back in the day, Unsolved Mysteries. Anytime I think of a child that has came up missing, it completely reminds me of that show, Unsolved Mysteries. See, because 
to be completely snatched up or whatever be going on with with all this pedophilia uh missing children with all this somebody took somebody and yet somebody didn't bring whoever back home and so for them to go missing i even seen one one time at a rest stop a missing persons uh up on the board it was a child's face that child had been missing since like 1983 1984 that's a long time to be missing and not only that when I seen it, it was somewhere back in like 2010. That's a long time. So did that child just run away and never come back home? See, that couldn't that could that in itself couldn't even be possible because that child was only like nine or ten years old. A child no at nine or ten years old, you know what, I can't just run away from home like this and never go back home because remember I still have to eat. I still have to drink. Water has to be fed to me as well as food. And I can't survive without either. And usually by nightfall, I start to experience hunger pains. Yes, a child is smart enough to know and understand this, that you know what? It's getting late. It's getting dark outside and I'm hungry. Who's going to feed me now that I have run away from home? A smart child is, is smart enough to say, you know what? I'm running away. I see a gas station over there. I'm going to go in there and tell them that I want to go home to mommy and daddy. Or mommy, if it's a single parent. I want to go back home because I'm hungry. Even if they do that the following day. You know, some kids might take it upon themselves, who knows, to run away from home and then realize, I haven't eaten since yesterday at 4 p.m. Or I haven't eaten yesterday since noontime. And I'm starving. You think a child is just going to stand there and let themselves starve? Usually there's hunger pangs in that. And feeling like you're in starvation because you, you didn't eat before you ran away from home. All this stuff just does never, it, it never adds up. It, it completely never adds up. Like, I do want to make a video about missing persons in the area of these children and these Amber Alerts and all this. You mean tell me a nine or ten year old kid would just go run away and be missing since like 1989 and here it is 2018 and they never return back home. How does that happen? Nine or ten years old. You know how many years that is? That is a long time for a kid to say, you know what, I'm going to go hitchhike on the highway. Or I'm going to just go walk down the block. Or you know what? I live somewhere out in California near Fr San Francisco or out by Vegas. And I'm going to take it upon myself to walk all the way down to Colorado or wherever. I'm living in the, in the West Coast and I'm going to walk all the way to the East Coast just to see what's there. I don't think a child thinks like that. I don't think many of these missing children think like that. I feel many of these children have actually been snatched up or something by pedophiles. And these pedophiles have either either beheaded them or killed them some type of way and buried their body. Because I've heard stories of even that kids that's go that they just disappear, been missing since 1991. And yet the year it's somewhere 2012 and then you never see and never find them and yet their face is still plastered somewhere in a police office and not just one city or not one county but various places across the nation and they still cannot find this young child so yes yeah, somebody had had to have taken that child murdered them and probably buried their body as sad as it sounds because they have so many missing kids. How is none of them not found? Remember. A 9 or 10. Even a 12 year old. Them kids can't provide for themselves. That just don't happen. It ain't like they can say you know what. I'm going to move to another city. And change my whole complete identity to something else. And get a job. How does that happen? I thought usually in order to have a work permit. You got to be, what, 14 or 15 years old? 
And yet many of these kids that go missing is much younger than that. They're not even teen, they're not even in their teenhood years. To be 12 years old. That's almost being a teen once you say 13, but they still too young in the face for, the, for them to go to another city and go form a whole complete identity and start working at some place like Burger King or Wendy's. That don't happen. So what happened to them? What happened to many of these kids? Yeah, see, as I'm in this group, trust and believe I will keep it. I will be keeping my eye out and I will be reporting it, even if I got to get Facebook headquarters on the phone because or fax or email or whatever. I don't play that. Even on Skype, I'll contact whoever needs to be contacted in the area of authorities. Because, see, I know in the area of technology, everything can be tracked. So when it comes to, um, you know how you see at the top of the bar, like way up at the top, the, H the HTTP and all that? That can be all. All everything can be tracked. It. So never allow anything of, of what I saw to bypass your eyes. It just, I don't know, because see, as I was in the group, I really wasn't paying attention. See, that wasn't my intent. I usually, when I'm in there, I'm like, okay, who on here is talking suicidal and feeling suicidal? Now, I seen a little boy. He was like 10 years old or 11 years old, went and killed himself. And so I posted, you know, God rest his soul. I hope his mom can find peace in this. You know, I just posted some encouragement. And then I also seen Matthew Shepard, his face, because of it being the anniversary of his death. You know, you want to continue to keep that as awareness. His The stance of posting Matthew Shepard is for everybody to not let that story die out of what happened. Of him being killed the way that he killed over his, what he was. So, yeah, so as I'm posting encouraging stuff, I did not, not once see that. But when I was on there, I just kept thinking, why is this person, whoever they are, why do they keep asking a person sex? Why is they asking everybody in a group? See, this group has over 30,000 people in the group. That's a lot of people, 30,000 people. And a lot of times pedophiles can be completely overlooked because to have 30,000 people is to not see them. Unless you see stuff, your scope, unless you're the type of person like me, that's hyper aware and you scope and you see stuff like, okay, that don't look right. Why are you posting that multiple times a day? You can post stuff in the area of marketing which if i'm wrong about this man maybe that's what he's doing maybe he's marketing and advertising himself i used to do a lot of posting the same repetitious material when i was doing marketing and advertising stuff on facebook and yet and still if you if you want to remove yourself from a group that you feel that there's creeps see this was my other question too if you feel that there's creeps in the group meaning pedophiles right and you want to remove yourself from the group, you basically walk away. And that's what I told him. When I asked him, well, who's the administrator on this group? Do she know that she can get in trouble with law enforcement? Supposedly, he told me the actual group that I'm in, and I didn't even know myself was a teenage girl. I said, you know what, that's posing problems in itself because if she's a teenage girl, and she's adding people like me, I'm almost 40, and she's adding everybody else, that poses an issue for all of us. So I was saying to him, maybe I need to remove my own self from this group because I did not know that that type of thing was going on. Anytime you got somebody on there and they're supposedly running a group of 30,000 people, right, and it pertains to sexuality, and that person is a teenager running it, and yet they're not really moderating it the way that they're supposed to. So it's all ages and all sexes and everybody posting all type of stuff. They're not all posting garbage. See, that's the thing. That's how stuff gets overlooked because you got people that's posting good and then you got people that's posting devious trying to snatch kids up. So I just was like, you know what? A group like this put us all in harm's way because law enforcement watch stuff like that. And I know for a fact the CIA is watching stuff like that. They might be on that group, who knows? 
but they have to watch Facebook because of this very activity that is going on. It could be a person like me out the kindness of my heart get caught up in something crazy like that because I'm trying to help young kids find their way in life where I was lost in relation to my sexuality and then you amongst people that you don't even know as pedophiles. I'm so happy I was brought to awareness. Thank you, God. Sometimes God, God or universe or whoever has to bring to your awareness the fact is what is going on so you don't get caught up in that so that you can be on alert. Because like I said, I don't just, I wouldn't just sit in the group. There was no point of me just sitting in a group. But I might post something. And then of course you got, by the time you post something, you got like 50 notifications of people responding back. And something else you done responded to. You got 100 notifications to somebody responding back to that. So it's like you're constantly being brought back to the group, right? It just, with these groups, a lot of times it's a lot. It'd be a lot of stuff going on and that's what i said before if i rewind back that's why sometimes i'd be making i'd be feeling distant because if it's too much activity especially in the area of law enforcement and what could what could tie you into something that you don't know what's going on is to make it pull all the way back yes it will because i i don't have time for any of that type of whatever like i said if you're going to be a pedophile then that is what you do but you're not going to do that while i'm sitting amongst children that that just does not happen because <laughs> i'll call for everybody in law enforcement all across the u.s to come and shut everything down that's just how i am not going to sit amongst me and have that go on it does not happen it does not happen because see on my end when i say about the missing per when I say when I say about the missing persons and children coming up missing that's someone's child I will hope that somebody will look out for me in the same area I will hope that somebody will look out for my nieces and nephews in the same area but it's so interesting because for some weird strange reason in my soul I kept uh, wanting to conversate with people like me, people of all ages, nation nationalities, but more so that they are in the room of gay, even straight, bisexual, just LGBT. I just felt that strong feeling of, you know what, let me go put myself in some groups and interact with some people because you never know what they're going through in life. You never know what their experiences is and you never know what their hardship is. And, you know, coming from the past that you came from, you never know who you can help. And I just felt like, you know what, you, the universe was pushing me to go join these groups and sit amongst these groups. And I was enjoying as I was sitting certain things, certain times of day, enjoying watching some of the, you know, younger because some of them they would say the age like 21 23 and they would just be like some of the gay guys they would just be proud of the fact and i i felt i stood proud with them for the simple fact you're that young you could have been disowned completely from your family but you're proud and showing you got your sunglasses on and you're just chilling throwing up a peace sign or just smiling at the camera i've seen happy faces like that as well as i've seen you know depressing type of stories or whatnot and then i've seen stories of where some of them were actually volunteering supposedly one part in california san francisco there's an area where it's more of like a a gay type of hospital it's more like a, a health center than it is a hospital or whatnot and so this individual was saying how she helps out so i responded back you know we need more people like you because the gay kids they endure a lot to the fact that they don't even want to live no more. So, you know, I condone everything that you do in that area. But, man, this world, this world, let me tell you, this world, I try to understand every individual's experience in the era of the pedophile. You know, what I've heard because there's been a few people in my family that were in fact molested some were boys 
and I haven't really heard too much about girls, but I know my niece, she had an issue in relation to one of her siblings find on her, which was kind of strange a bit to me. You just, it's all type of stuff you hear, but in relation to these grown men molesting these kids, it's like you might have to pick up a science book or something, psychology book to fully understand what is underneath that. I mean, I've read in the area of a lot of times if a person, a grown man, has been molested as a child, more than likely he will repeat that same action. And not only that, if he's not fully right in the mind or something, sometimes he'll pass that even down to his children by doing certain things to them. Now, it's interesting because it's this girl that had, she had, um, attended the same college that I went to way back in my early 20s. Yes, I went to college. I said that before, didn't I? St help started, I st help started a poet society and everything on the campus. But anyway, this girl, her father was sleeping with her in the manner of he treated her like she was his, his girlfriend. I thought that was so strange because that was the first time I had ever heard anything like that. And what's so weird about this story was I had to look more into it after I found out what was going on with that because this girl was from Virginia. Now you hear all type of stuff about Virginia and how they practice all type of everything. <laughs> they practice all type of and then you hear stories, crazy stories, how they eat human beings and stuff like that way out in the woods. You hear all this type of stuff like that. And I say that because my dad and his side of the family comes from West Virginia, which is another part. And then my brother, he lives in Virginia. But I had never heard of the fact of a father sleeping with his own child. I thought that was the most strangest thing. And this girl, she was really, really cute. Kind of light skin, had long hair. Used to wear these weird type of top hats, kind of like how I wore. But I just thought that that was strange. Like, I would have never guessed. And she used to be the type of person that was, like, really quiet. Like, when we would be in the, in the poetry meetings, she would come in there with one of my other friends. And they would just be, you know, like two peats in the pods, almost like close best friends or whatnot. But her whole demeanor was, like, innocent. She had an innocent child-like demeanor. But once again, I said she was like really cute and kind of prissy like, just adorable. And so one day, somebody who she had hung around, like they used to all hang around in groups or whatnot, went to school together and everything. They called me on the phone and told me, do you know such and such sleeps with her dad? And not only that, she brags about it. You know how girls, when they have girls night, when girls, they usually have sleepover parties at somebody's house or apartment and they all be like in the living room or in the bedroom and they, they talk about guys and what guy they like to sleep with and all this other stuff. That situation had brought itself during the time they had their little sleepover. They was bragging about whoever they want to get with and sleep with. And then for her, she brought up her dad, how she liked having sex with him. And I'm like, dude, like, why are you calling me on the phone? Because I didn't know what to think of that. Like, are you serious? I just, I would never see. Sometimes people in life, they are not who you think they are. And not only that, their life, their life story is not what you think it is. Until somebody else come present it to you. And by the time they present it to you, you don't even know how to take it. Because for that girl, for me to find out from her friend that that girl was having full-blown sex with her father was enough to make me sick like physically but not in a sense bashing her because see I think like I told when I told the girl that called me on the phone because with her she was actually full-blown gay the girl that called me on the phone and told her she was best friends with the other girl that girl was a full-blown lesbian. I could tell she probably had a crush on her. So she probably was whatever. 
I don't know what was going on. I'm still trying to figure out that that whole situation today. But anyways, that situation, I just, I could not, I mean, visually in my mind, because I'm very visual. So if you tell me something, I start putting it together in my head. I'm thinking that girl had to be introduced. I mean, for her to sit amongst them during a girl's night sleepover, saying who you would love to have sex with, and you mentioned that it was your father and how you enjoyed how he would do. I mean, she even talked about how she would like suck him off his penis area. She said that. And her friend came and told me, I mean, her friend told me everything. And I just was like, oh my gosh, like, I, I think that girl need to go see somebody. She need to go talk to somebody because for me, I felt like that kind of was like not normal. And who's to say for me was normal, but in the back of my head came molestation. That's all I could think about is in order for this girl to be in her 20s and brag about how much she liked to have sex with her father and how her father turns him on. Remember, her father is much more her father was what? Cuz he got he got killed. Somebody killed him through the church or something like that. It was crazy. Some homeless man killed him. But anyway, I said I was trying to put two and two together to tell them that they should have reported that to somebody. Somebody re law enforcement should have been reported to. I said she had to have been introduced that very thing that she's doing. She had to have been introduced that at the young age of like four or five or six, even six years old. Because see, in American society, that's not normal to be having sex and allowing your dad to fondle you, right? And the only way for a child to see that as normal, listen to me when I say this. The only way that a child can perceive such actions like that as normal in the air of letting your father stick his thing inside of you, and not only that, ejaculate inside of you, that is to say that your father has been doing that since you were in early childhood. Something about that. Like, in my mind, it just clicked right then. Like, okay, no, you know what? This girl father has been molesting her since about five or six years old. Because, see, a young child like that, Anytime a father will, fi will find her on a young girl like that, usually a young girl will go tell. Unless, say, she's threatened or something by a father or something like that, or a grown man, whoever, but I'm speaking on a father. Unless that girl was threatened by her father, but the way that she talked about how she was so in love with her father showed that that was not, in fact, the very the, the thing. The issue. So if a young girl was more than likely, because see, if your father is molesting you and the way that he put himself on you through sex and fondling, usually it's to threaten you, right? You would usually carry that until your adulthood life and you will perceive the world totally different and even perceive that man different in the area of being completely, I don't know, like you wouldn't want nothing to do with him by the time you get older. I'm thinking, let me think. If a young girl is threatened by her dad to never say that he's having sex with her at six years old or even five years old, wouldn't when you grow up, you wouldn't want nothing to do with that man? Or you would see him as even a creep like that man in that group was talking about creeps. I'm just asking this a question because I like I said, I don't know what to make of the situation even today, even though he died by the hands of that homeless man or whatever through church. But I just was like, huh? You can hear some sometimes and be like, what? Like that don't. That don't add up. But in my mind right then, as she was explaining it to me on that phone and she was laughing, the girl that was best friends with the girl was laughing because even in her mind, she was in disbelief. But see, she knew about this, even her, with them being so young, they knew about this going on. Probably since what, maybe her teen years. So that's why she thought that it was funny because in the back of her mind, she was looking at the girl as being a freak. 
and as defective and that something was wrong with her and why couldn't the girl see that herself was a defective person like the girl that i had head on the phone she could not she just kept laughing like man this is crazy man you need to talk to her and i'm like well what am i gonna say first of all i'm gonna take her straight to law enforcement and say you know something about this whole ordeal is wrong and off because once again as it was presented to me what flew through my mind was like you know what this man has been putting himself on this girl since she was a baby he had to because for a girl, I mean, she would brag about her father like he was her boyfriend. And she treated him like that. And not, even, not only that, she would meet up with this man at hotels and have full-blown sex with him. I mean, the most vulgar sex you can have. And her mother knew about it to the fact one time the daughter and the father was having sex because see the mother and the father was still married the the daughter and the father was having sex in the bedroom in the very bedroom and the mother was in the living room watching soap operas like how does it happen stuff that you hear in everyday life real life stories that you hear in everyday life that you be like how is that possible you don't judge it but you try to figure out how does that happen? Like, when that girl told me, I said, well, how could her mom be in the other room while the father is having sex with the daughter? Like, how does that actually, that don't even seem possible. And yet it was. So if that mother knew that that was going on and the mother never said nothing or walked in and fixed the situation, maybe something was wrong with that mother from the beginning because supposedly as long as they've been doing it, the mother had knew all along in her house, in her bed. You hear what I'm saying? A father and a daughter was having sex in this mother's bed. And not once did the mother think upon herself, you know what, I need to stop this type of activity. This shouldn't be going down. And so it came out in front of the church later on that he came out and confessed in front of the church, in front of everybody in church that he was sorry that he had been doing that to his own daughter. Yes, he did that. He came out and confessed in front of the whole church and said he had been sleeping with his daughter and how they had been meeting up at hotels and all this other stuff. And the mother is just sitting in the center of the church listening to all this. And as a father is explaining it, he's all crying tears like baby crocodile tears over the guilt and, and shame that he actually felt everybody in the, in the church was quiet they didn't know what to think because that type of stuff it goes on in black families in the black community and yet many people don't speak up and see that poses the issue because to have something like that is to cause damage yes it is it that causes problems because see that girl would not even allow herself to date other guys because see her dad I guess he was jealous or something like that. And not only that, he would threaten other guys. And on top of that, she felt like she was just saving herself for him. She bodily, she was saving her heart and herself for him. Almost like in a form of like marriage or something, whatever what was going on with that. But the crazy part was she had been giving herself to him since she was a child. She had to. Something was just, I mean, that whole, I had never... I keep repeating, I'm sorry, but I never heard nothing like that. And when I say stuff like that poses damage when you don't fix it, that mother had guilt on her end. She had to. And yet she didn't put herself out there enough to say, you know what, this is a problem. I have been a part of this problem and we need to fix and resolve this. And the sexual stuff needs to stop. The girl has to be damaged in some way because her father, he ended up moving down to the south right he moved down to the south he had always been involved with the church but i guess he took it upon himself to go open up his own church down in the south so he opened up his own church got church members it was some homeless guy that was an actual member of the church but he would come and go 
I guess he had like some type of drug issue or something. He would be in and out of the church or whatever. Sometimes you would, I guess, see him and then other times not. This is what I was told. And so one day he came and asked the girl's father if he can borrow some money. And I'm thinking that it's in the area to go buy drugs or something like that. But the girl's father, seeming he was the pastor of his own church now down in the south, sometimes he would help that homeless guy who was a member. And so this time he didn't have the money, right? He didn't have the money, so the guy killed him right there on the spot. Killed him right there on the spot. Stabbed him or whatever happened. Stabbed him right there on the spot, right there in church. Crazy situations happen. And I can't say what goes around comes about comes around back in relation to this situation but it almost seems like that and see that's all bad because for that girl to act like she was so in love with her father like a man loves a woman like a couple that are dating or a married couple is to be binded with one that's how this girl was acting with her father as if they were one right so when that when when her father got killed the way that he got killed at church even that in itself was in the news they had to do something psychologically to her because remember she was looking at themselves she was looking at themselves as if they were a couple so not only was that her father she slept with him and act like that was her man that has to be some psychological damage or something like that that's why when when I got the call, even when that happened, when I later on got the call about the fact that he got killed, I was like, what? All I could think of was this young girl was being molested. She found that as normal. And now the guy that she viewed as being her man, which her actual father has died. How was her mental capabilities now? I'm telling you, real life stories is something else. Because now, supposedly, she's black, of course. Now she's with a white guy. And that relationship seemed kind of off. I mean, just the whole situation with that just seemed completely, like, off. I don't know what it was. She went and married him or whatever. But it just, the whole everything just was kind of like, what in the world? What is, I mean, what is going on? Sometimes you can view stuff from from so far you can be like instead of just you just be like dude like what in the world is this i mean some of the sexual stuff that she was doing her father doing to her father and the stuff that i was told in that area on the phone i was like stop stop this is not enough for me to handle at this time matter of fact don't tell me nothing else what you need to be telling me is who's going to call contact law enforcement. And not only that, who is going to contact a therapist? Because once again, this type of stuff goes on in the black communities and black families. And yet it's completely unheard of in the area of not being spoken of and taken care of. That's a problem. And I have not seen her since because I haven't been around in that area of, you know, college where we like met when we used to hang out and all that i had not seen her even online because i don't have her on my friends list but i just wonder where she's at mentally because to just randomly go marry some guy i mean and she's just putting that guy in her father's place to try to cover up all that is that has happened i mean even then they was telling her before her father died, they was telling her that activity was not normal. By society standards or whatever, it wasn't normal. That's what they was letting her know. You know, girl, that's not, you know, you, that's not nothing to brag about. You know, you don't want to do stuff like that because even that can put you in harm's way. People will, I don't know, play on your vulnerabilities for the simple fact they think that something is wrong with you enough not to understand that you don't go sleep with your father so goodness society as a whole it just to me sometimes i feel sadness 
for some of these families and some of society and what be going on. It just, I feel sadness sometimes because for that girl, like I said, to be introduced in a sexual manner with her father doing stuff like that, it makes you question what was wrong with the mother. See, as I said, the mother was married to that man, which was her child's father, right? They all was living in the same home. And yet when she come, when he came out and confessed that he was having sex with her as an adult, when he confessed in front of the church, the mother made him move out because she felt like that pose shame on her. How does that pose shame on you when you knew about this all along and you never said nothing? She made him move out and go stay in a hotel and even the church said it. The pastor and everybody said it to him in front of the whole church. You got to move out. So she went with that same thing and said, you got to move out. So he was staying in a hotel. And as he was staying in a hotel, she, the girl, was still sneaking over there. Her, his, own, his own daughter was still sneaking over to the hotel and sleeping with him, having sex with him, full-blown sex. Just, it just be like, man. So since he got murdered the way he got murdered by that homeless man, remember, he was married to his child's mother. So it makes you wonder. What does she feel? Because, see, to get a call on the phone and know that your husband was killed in that type of way is to still understand what was your whole role in this whole situation of your child sleeping with him. Because still, still in my eyes, I don't care what nobody say, still in my eyes, that was still molestation right there. That child, even though she's a grown adult, somewhere probably now, she might be 30 by now, something like that. But just to know that that had to alter her mind and her personality. I'm sure she sees the wear in the world in all type of strange ways, but that mother it just be like, dude, I'm not judging even her. But she has to know that in a sense her child will be considered abnormal psychologically. And her husband is gone. See, when you don't speak up and you don't come forward and you stop like that, you don't you don't stop stuff like that. It ends to all type of stuff that doesn't come out good in the end. Because see, him being that father like he was, he had to pay for his actions. And maybe his actions greeted him in death. And that's sad to say, but. Sometimes the only way to stop stuff like that is to take that person out of the equation. The only way to stop a father who has been molesting his child for that long and even considering he was considering her his girlfriend because he told her to her face, you're mine, you're my girlfriend, you can have no other boyfriends but me and you will not be sleeping with no other guys. I mean, while him and her will be laid up in the bed guys will be calling her on the phone and he would snatch the phone out of her hand like that type of stuff has to come back around and i know i said about the whole incest thing when i said you know if we got here at 7.6 billion we got here through incest right i was saying in the in the area of consensual humans got here on this earth to be 7.6 billion through incest way in the beginning of time yes i said that and i said i'd agreed with consensual but with that that could have never been consensual until she grew up to be an adult but even by then she was old enough to know years ago she was molested she had to be so yeah, it's it's just too much that could be said on this topic. I think I'm gonna close this out because the video is too long. But yeah, there you gotta watch out on Facebook. There's pedophilia going on, and I don't know what it is. But for me, I try to stay away. I try to stay away because there's harm in that. Yes, it is, and that's a fact. What do you feel about pedophiles? Do you think that they should be put in jail? Or do you think they should be allowed to live next door to you? I mean, what do you feel about this whole matter? What do you think that Facebook 
and other social media platforms should be doing to prevent and stop this type of behavior, even though they can't see through the screen who is who. And they're hiding behind fake profiles and they never show their face like me and you. What do you think and feel? What do you think and feel? Do you think that law enforcement doesn't do enough and that they could do more? What do you think? I want you to tell me.